have a special guest on the show, Carl Za. Hello, Za- Carl. Hi, how are you guys? Uh, I don't even know your names. Sorry. <laughs> I yeah, just know you guys. Is Nikolai. <laughs> and uh, my co-host's name is Kirill. Yes. Kirill and Nikolai. Привет. And, uh, Carl is... Как дела? Привет, привет. <laughs> очень хорошо. <laughs> Сегодня очень тепло на улице. Плюс шесть. Снега почти нет. Просто сказка. Uh, yeah, я yeah, знаю, you чуть-чуть okay? русский, just, just a little bit. Sorry. Yeah, you sound like like a, a flea market Chinese person. <laughs> <laughs> Is this okay? So yeah, that's the effect I'm going for. <laughs> yeah so carl is a host of the silk and steel podcast a great name by the way it's like a feminine version of uh, misima's book uh, sun and steel <laughs> speaking of which have you read any yukio misima or mishima there's actually a, a old american band with that name i only found out after i chose the name for the podcast but i i hope that band is defunct now so i can take the name for myself <laughs> all right russians with attitude serves as kind of a window on twitter youtube elsewhere to the real russian values history political and cultural life and uh, we are enthusiasts we are not paid for it by our government to do that uh, that's why i can Thankfully. say whatever i want yeah <laughs> share my conspiracy theories about putin and generally be an asshole or, or as nasty as i want and your account carl seems to be very similar to ours but it's a window to the real china well i i have to uh make it known that I am not opposed to take money from Putin. So if Mr. Putin wants to send me rubles, <laughs> I will be happy to take them. <laughs> yeah, but... Same goes for Xi Jinping. I'm, I'm, I walk on all kind of currencies, RMB, rubles, dollars, I'll take them all. But are you a Communist Party paid propagandist? I need to know. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Not. Uh, I'm right. not a car carrying uh, member of the Communist Party. That's too bad. I thought you are. I'm disappointed. <laughs> All right. So I always wanted to speak to an actual Chinese person on global matters, the Russian-Chinese relations, uh, our well uh, reception of each other, and so on. But it's pretty hard uh, to do. There. Are simply no Chinese online. It seems to be this way. There are like, there's a billion and 400 million Chinese in this world. And, or so, or so we are led to believe, but there's no single mutual on Twitter. And the only Chinese I ever knew were expats in US or elsewhere. And you are an expert as well, Carl. Is this right? You live in Bali. I, I, I just say I'm an immigrant. I mean, expat, I think you have to, uh, I don't mm. know. I, 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 don't, I don't call, I never call myself expat. I, I just call myself an immigrant. Now I'm an immigrant to Indonesia because now I have settled uh, here on the island of Bali, where there's a lot of Russians, by the way. There's a, there have yeah. been a lot of Russians in the last few years. It's probably <laughs> half Russian, is this not? Yeah, there's a lot of Russians. And you actually, I thought you guys are Americans, you know, just by the way you throw your lingo around on Twitter. I Before I, I yeah. you know, heard your voice, I just assume you guys are probably a bunch of uh, Russian Americans. I, I was So I was surprised no, that you actually live I, in I've Moscow. I've never been to US. Uh, really? I live in Yekaterinburg, yes. Yeah, I don't live in Moscow and I've never been to US. It's just that uh, I was uh, poisoned by the internet to become spiritually American. Well, I'm not spiritually American, but I can act as one, right? As we all probably are. Uh, about the Chinese question and why there are so few Chinese on the internet. I know that there is a language barrier, uh, barrier the same that with the Russians and an artificial firewall preventing most of the Chinese living inside China from, well, interacting with us uh, from, and uh, I don't get to see all the brilliant Chinese shit posters online, uh, but still it sounds a little far-fetched that almost 20% of world's population is nowhere to be seen on the English speaking internet, uh, apart from a few public officials and immigrants. So Carl, what's up with this? 
Can you explain? Well, I mean, you you already uh, hit it. Uh, it's first, there's a language barrier. You know, most people, uh, most Chinese, they learn English from a young age, but it's it's not like conversational English. You know, they learn textbook English. I remember when I first uh, took English class in China in what is it, sixth grade, and they teach us stuff like. This is a table. This is a chair. Hello, Mr. Smith. Which is completely mm-hmm. useless when I first traveled to United States when I was thirteen. You know, like I could, I, I could hardly, barely form a a, a sentence. Um, so that's one. And another one is there. There are some Chinese who you know both good with English and have the the tech skills to use VPN to get outside of the firewall. Yeah. But even among those group of Chinese, you know, a lot of them would may, ju- may just hang around in like the Chinese Twitter, like in the Chinese language Twitter, right? So, so they, they, um, mm-hmm. it, it, it's, it's. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's more likely that immigrant would be the ones who who actually actively engage in English conversations. So, so I mean, I, I think that's normal. And besides, within. The, the 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 Chinese speaker world, right? I mean, China has their own internet within the firewall, and there's a lot of interesting Chinese content to engage with. Sure. Uh, so you know, I, I I guess that that's probably why. It's pretty similar to the Russian situation, um, because yes, uh, Russians learn English, but it's a completely useless garbage kind of English, uh, and it's always uh, in a very British accentuated way, like the Q instead of a line and stuff like that. It's very British, yeah, not very useful, but uh, still, Russians have uh, an easy time to learn English, easier time than the Chinese, I would guess because there's not that much of a distance between the two languages, because both of them are Indo-European, right? And uh, in your case, it's a, a completely different universe. Yeah, I mean, university, university, or orange, yeah. orange, I mean, it's almost the same. It just changes the accent a little bit, right? It's like speaking... <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Uh, But uh, yeah, uh, I get it now. But uh, there is an interesting thing about the cultural distance. So there are plenty of Russian immigrants, uh, immigrants or whatever, expats, Russians living in UK, Germany, Dubai, Georgia, uh, or Russians who were born in other countries. Yet uh, the thing that uh, was always curious to me is that there is virtually no cultural distance between me a native uh, mainland Russian, and all those branches of Russians uh, elsewhere. For example, Kirill is living in Europe for more than uh, two decades, and yet we share the same culture and inside jokes, memes, sayings. There is no distance at all. Kirill could have been uh, my autistic neighbor. (laughs) Like... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Uh, so... I have a feeling, though, that, that it's a pretty unique situation in Russia, uh, within r- Russian culture, and it's not like that in other nations. I think there is a great distance between Arabs and Arab expats or Chinese living in China and Chinese abroad, the Chinese diaspora. So, Carl, do you feel any cultural or linguistic or lifestyle difference between you and the average Chinese citizen? Well, no, I mean... I mean, okay, so I can, I'm, I'm like chameleon, right? I, I change my colors depending on my surroundings. So I, you know, I can, I'm, I'm fully fluent in both standard Mandarin and English, you know, so if I go to China, I just completely switch to, mm-hmm. to the Chinese side. Uh, it's, for, for me, it's not a big deal because, um, but for others might be different, you know, because I was born and raised in China until I was 13 years old. So when I left China, I'm already able to kind of hook myself into like the Chinese world, um, as opposed to yeah. say someone who was born and raised in the United States to Chinese parents, they have a very different experience because they, they if they grew up in us are basically americans with chinese parents and a chinese face um but i i'm 
I consider myself bilingual and bicultural. Um, so I, I, I have, I don't, I, I mean, okay. So for me, there might, actually, there might be a little bit difference between me and say those people who, those Chinese people who are born to Chinese parents, but born and raised in the United States, because there might be some cultural distance there because for, um, you know, I, while I understand the American side of things, they might not understand, fully understand the Chinese side of things. Um, and if I travel now, I'm in Southeast Asia. There have been longstanding Chinese community in Southeast Asia for like hundreds of years. Yeah. Um, so there, there's a little bit difference because, for example, in Indonesia, most of the Chinese immigrants to Indonesia, they traditionally came from a particular region of China that they speak their own dialect. Um, the, the, the only way they learn standard Mandarin is if they go to Chinese schools. But in 1965, because there was a coup in Indonesia, um, and after that, the new, Indo the new Indonesian dictator, Suharto, that came to power in 1965, he banned all the Chinese schools in Indonesia. Uh, you know, Chinese name was not allowed. So there's a whole generation of Chinese in Indonesia that grew up without learning uh, like written Chinese or how to speak standard Mandarin. So they only know like, uh, you know, how to speak Indonesian. Uh, and whatever mm -hmm. Indonesian dialect. So, so there's for f between us, there might be some cultural differences, for example. Yeah. So basically, they became Indonesians, right? Mm -hmm. They're just ethnically Chinese. And the same thing is happening in Thailand. There is a long standing line of Chinese people living in Thailand, uh, and they are basically Thai. They have uh, little to do with uh, China uh, other than their ethnicity or maybe some form of Mandarin speaking at home, but spoken at home, but culturally and otherwise, they became different. It's not really the case. Uh, there's a lot of Russians uh, everywhere, but they're not quick to completely forget their language, for example. But maybe it's because it's not as distant and it's not as complicated, maybe, as Mandarin. And without learning it, yeah you quickly lose your identity. Do you feel hurt by this, by the Chinese people who lost their identity and their language? I, I think it's individual choice. I mean, I, I don't, I, for me, myself, I would try to impart Chinese language skills to my own children. Uh, I haven't done that very well, but that's what I try to do. But for other people, I mean, I understand, you know, some parents, they, um, especially people of my parents' generation, when they first immigrate to the United States, they want to assimilate into the mainstream mm -hmm. U.S. society. And they thought the quickest way to do that is to make sure their children have native English speaking skills to the point that they would discourage, you know, they would not speak for example, Chinese to their children. They would speak only English. And so they're, they're their children grew up mon monolingual. And I mean, it's a shame, but I, again, I understand that. I understand that was their parents' choice from that particular generation. But I think things are changing because right now with mm -hmm. rise of China, people do recognize that uh, Chinese skill is actually marketable now. Now, you know, instead of yeah. being a, a liability or stigma, now, now to actually have be able to speak Chinese can open up doors and opportunities. So, so people's attitudes are changing. Yeah, interesting. So for me, the soil of the land, mainland Chinese person is that guy who was gulping down beers on a rural Chinese version of TikTok. You probably know the guy, right? So now, do you think that uh, you could become friends with him in real life or he would call you a westernized sissy and beat you up? Please be honest. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I, I could totally socialize with, with him because like I yeah. <laughs> would just, I would be speaking his language, you know. I would not be like throwing around English terms around when I'm hanging out with him, right? Yeah. <laughs> I would just fully switch on to the Chinese mode, right? Yeah, but do you agree that uh, this guy represent is a representative of the rural Chinese culture? Particular brand of rural Chinese. I mean, like, uh, 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 you know, but but China is actually quite different, quite diverse. He, he's 
uh, he represent a particular brand of like a northern uh, Chinese uh, farmer mm. type of dude. Yes. Yeah, it's very Russian like. Yeah, this guy could have been a Buryat. There is virtually no <laughs> difference between him and a Buryat. And that's the thing that China is different from Russia, that China is incredibly diverse within itself. Although Russia, well, we have lots of ethnicities, but really, really, we have the same language spoken, the same culture, the same memes, the same jokes. It's very uniform. And in China, I think, yeah, this guy who was drinking beer on the, or spirits uh, on TikTok on the, what is this name? It's not TikTok. It's the different TikTok, right? Uh, yeah. I'm yeah. Not sure. It's, I think, believe it's quite so. It, uh, there's like different Chinese platform of uh, short video platform. I, uh, the, the it ones that are part- or something. Douyin, okay, Douyin is a Chinese version of TikTok. So they're both owned by the same parent company, ByteDance. But because China has its own set of censorship laws, so they they created one set of software, Douyin, for China that would comply with the Chinese censorship laws. And then they create an international version called TikTok. So it's basically... Yeah, the international version. The international version is the one that makes you retarded and the Chinese version is like teaching you math, astronomy and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of retarded content on Douyin also. You guys just don't know about it because it's within the Chinese <laughs> firewall yeah. and within the Chinese language sphere. Uh, it's it's not that different, but, but Chinese government <laughs> do have regulations on social media so it's more heavily regulated whereas you know there's uh which which is funny because uh you know the u.s senators will say why is uh you know biden serving more wholesome content within china but then also serving all the crap on tiktok well i mean do you want to know why it's because chinese government regulate though in inside china you know you are U.S. congressman. You make laws. I mean, potentially you could make laws to regulate TikTok and other social media content as well. But you know, <laughs> but it's, it's it's so it's it's a it's a weird argument by saying we're not doing our job to regulate this content. So it must be a nefarious Chinese plot to sabotage America. Yeah, I heard that this guy that we spoke about was uh, reprimanded by the authorities for spreading the the wrong message about uh, China uh, on the internet. But I have a feeling that he was the only man spreading the real northern Chinese rural values online. (laughs) And that includes uh, drinking beer and rice vodka and listening to sad sad, uh, chanson songs and eating everything that moves and being a rough farmer so uh, was he actually well yeah yeah i mean like the chinese uh, censorship uh uh chinese censors are pretty ridiculous right they 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 try to regulate everything and and they're like they're just like those nosy aunties and uncles that are trying to get in your business uh, at every opportunity i mean I, i'm I'm, I, I'm sure there's something equivalent like maybe at back in the soviet times or something <laughs> it's 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 really yeah, annoying sure. because they're trying to control the control the uh narrative they're trying to present like a a a a, a, a polished image to the outside world right that, that's why um but people love this guy more than any a git prop uh, video or anything like that uh, people genuinely love the, the videos of this guy and uh, it's just yeah th- those agencies that polish the image of their country are usually retarded and we have this uh, same agency now the raskomnadzor they're nosy but they're not yet as powerful probably than uh, the chinese equivalent Hopefully they won't be because I really hate this uh, stuff because uh, it's not only in China or Russia that is going on. The the same, there's no formal agency in the West, but yeah, there's a lot of uh, nosy aunties uh, spoiling the, the fun of everyone. Well, I, I would say, I would, I would even th- say that uh, the, the, uh, the clumsy attempt of the Chinese uh, censors probably is the they they are the one doing the most heavy lifting of alienating 
the the Chinese youth. You know, most of the Chinese youth are are yeah. patriotic, and most of them actually think the government in general are doing a good job. But they don't like it when the when the, those censors yeah. are trying to get into their fun, right? Trying to like clamp down on, on their fun. But that's a problem. True. It's because the censors are a bunch of boomers. Right, they're 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 from a different generation. They have totally different values. They don't understand what you know what makes the uh, young people tick. They don't understand what's popular. They don't understand what appeals to say, for example, people outside of China. They have no idea. Their only you know criteria is what appeal to their own sensibility, which is like, I don't know, stuck in 1970s or 1980s or something. But but th- this is a problem. This is a kind of a tension that, that exists in China. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's something similar uh, in Russia, maybe. Let's not be completely lib about it, because <laughs> there is a reason why Chinese government or Russian government attempts to control the image, control the information, because otherwise it would be completely, well, uh, snatched under our noses by Americans. I mean, basically yeah. every smartphone is like a CIA agent in your pocket. So it does make sense. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I mean that, yeah, I mean, I understand that. That, that is a reason. Uh, I just think sometimes they go overboard. Uh, but but you're right. I mean, the whole reason the Great Firewall was created in the first place was because the, the, the U.S. government is basically turning all the American-dominated social media platform into regime change tools, right? I mean, they did that uh, mm-hmm. with like Green Revolution in Iran in 2009. They tried something similar in China. I mean, before 2009, most of the social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, all of that was open in China, was accessible. But it's around 2009 when U.S. government start to be more overt in weaponizing the social media platform, that's when uh, Chinese government finally clamped down and uh, built a great firewall. So, yeah, I, I understand the reason. I'm just saying, like, I wish those... Um, those aunties could be less uptight. <laughs> That's how I'm saying. Well, now let's move on to more pressing issues, matters. I will start with a Russian commoner's perception of China and how it changed uh, throughout time. And then I want you, Carl, to do the same, but uh, in reverse, to tell me what the general Chinese attitude was of Russia and Russian people and how if uh, how it transformed if it transformed so in the uh, 5th century bc the proto russian tribes uh, <laughs> all right excuse me for putin's, uh, putin's breath yeah basically russians didn't really care much about the chinese before the revolution uh, so chinese were considered uh, well non-Christians, and they were not Christians. Uh, so, Basurmania, is this the right term for Chinese, Kirill? Or maybe I'm mixing it up. Uh, no, I no. don't think we call it the Chinese Basurmania. That's, mm. uh, because Basurmania is, um, it's, well, it's, it's a mispronunciation of, yes, of, uh, of Muslims. It's uh, introduced to Muslims. And actually, um, 